Hello and welcome to this lesson, anal abscess and anal fistula. Anal abscess is one of the most common causes of acute anal pain and anal fistula is one of the most common causes of anal leakage and in this video we are going to talk about everything that you need for your board examination. So first let's understand what is anal abscess and what is anal fistula. So most of the anal abscesses are due to the fact that we have blockage of anal glands. Note that these glands are cryptoglandular in origin. And when we have blockage of anal glands, as the result, the anal abscess will form. Of course, this is not the only etiology. We can have other etiologies. Probably the most important one is Crohn's disease. But other etiologies like, like cancer can also lead to anal abscess. And anal fistula is a complication of anal abscess can be a complication of anal abscess meaning that the patient can have anal fistula due to recurrent anal abscess or recurrent inflammation in case of for example Crohn's disease. What are the types for anorectal abscesses and anorectal fistulas? First of all note that the classification is based on anatomical location of the abscess and or fistula and in case of anal abscess, we have four types. We have perianal, which is the most common type, and we have two types in this classification. We have submucosal anal abscess, which can happen inside the rectum, and we also have subcutaneous, which is in the perianal region of the uh, rectal area. We also have ischiorectal abscess. We can also have intersphincteric abscess, which happens between sphincteric muscles. And also the least common type is supralevator, which happens above the levator muscle. In case of anal fistula, again, classification is based on anatomical location of fistula and origin of anal abscess. So we have five types here. We have intersphincteric, which happens between sphincteric muscle. You can see it in the picture. We can also have transsphincteric, meaning that the fistula is actually passing through the sphincteric muscle, something like here. And you can see this is intersphincteric. We have submucosal anal fistula, which is under mucosal surface of rectum. We also have extra sphincteric type, which is uh, unrelated to the location of the sphincteric muscle and also note that the two most common type of anal fistulas are intersphincteric and transsphincteric. Here is it designated with the red color. So anal abscess is an acute form of the disease so the patient is going to experience anal pain, swelling, probably fever, erythema, and leakage of the pus and blood is also possible due to a spontaneous rupture of anal abscess. And also, the patient might have asymmetric perirectal tissue. But note that if the patient is having intersphincteric or supralevator abscess, these symptoms might be absent in the patient. And in case of anal fistula, because this is a chronic disease and there is a fistula, the patient will be presented with mucus and blood leakage from anal region and also the patient can have irritation in the anal region and note that in case of anal fistula most patients will have a history of anal abscess. So what are the diagnostic tools in case of anal abscess and anal fistula? In case of anal abscess, most of the abscesses can be found with the help of physical examination. Note that most of the abscesses in case of anal abscess are pre-anal, so physical examination is just enough to make the diagnosis of anal abscess. If the location of the abscess is in either interesphincteric or supralevator, we can use either MRI, CT or ultrasound in order to diagnose the anal abscess. In case of anal fistula, we should use MRI. This is the best test that we have and it can identify the tract and type of anal fistula. Transanal ultrasound also can be helpful and in this test we use hydrogen peroxide in order to identify the tract. But note that all the patients who are suffering from anal fistula with recurrent or complicated anal fistula should be investigated for Crohn's disease because Crohn's disease causes recurrent anal fistula and complicated fistula formation. So what are the treatment options for anal abscess and anal fistula? In case of anal abscess, especially when the patient is suffering from preanal form and ischiorectal form, the simple incision and drainage of the abscess will be just enough. But note that fast skin healing can cause recurrency of anal abscess. 
If the patient is suffering from inter-sphintering or supralevator abscess, transanal drainage is the treatment of the choice. And note that the follow-up of, uh, follow of these patients is very important in order to screen for recurrent abscesses. And in case of recurrent abscesses, you have to do the workup for Crohn's disease because Crohn's disease can cause recurrent anal abscesses. In case of anal fistula, fistulotomy can be uh, um, can be treatment of the choice. But also note that because in case of fistulotomy we have uh, actually tearing of the uh, intersphincteric muscles and we have damage to the intersphincteric muscles, the patient can be suffering from leakage and fecal incontinence. We have two other methods. We have one method which is lift and the other one is rectal advancement flap which spares the sphincteric muscles and have less post-operative complications. So for example in case of lift which is uh, standing for ligation of intra-sphincteric fistula tract we are actually cutting the fistula from, uh, between the sphincteric muscles so if this is the normal fistula we are cutting it and this stops the leakage of anal content from the body so this is a bigger picture of the uh, lift procedure as you see this is the patient with fistula formation inter sphincteric fistula formation and here we are actually cutting the fistula tract so this helps the patient to have less symptoms and leakage from anal area what are the complications of anal abscess and anal fistula? Probably the most important complication of anal fistula is pilonidal cyst, but also note that the patient can have perianal hydradenitis. This is when we have inflammation of preanal area glands and this is actually quite painful situation in case of anal abscess anal abscess can cause destruction of anorectal tissue especially when we have recurrent abscesses so sphincteric muscles will be lost or damaged so as the result the patient can have fecal incontinence also systemic sepsis can be possible with deep abscesses and also note that again when a patient is presenting with recurrent abscesses it is very important to work up that patient with Crohn's disease. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.